Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to an MPC Online Bible Study. My name is Matthew McLeod, the lead and teaching pastor here at Mansfield Pentecostal Church. And every Tuesday night, we have a thought to think about, a question to ponder, and a text to study. And it's an opportunity for you to learn something from God's Word, if you're part of a life group, to connect with, with the guys in your life group, and to discuss the questions together. And then that way you get a lot more uh, out of our time together as we learn uh, from the Scriptures. Now, you are aware that we, uh, for the last uh, couple of weeks, we've been doing a new mini Bible study t- teaching series titled Pathway. Uh, looking at God's way of saving grace, or God's way of salvation. And uh, we've been looking at how God does the work of salvation in our lives, how God reveals the saving grace to bring us to himself and his kingdom. We saw that firstly, it starts with God's choosing, a very controversial, thorny issue, I know, but the scriptures are clear. God, before he laid the foundations of the heavens and the earth, chose you or chose people to be part of his kingdom and then came the call of the father and our lives and the call of the father was made effective to us through the preaching of the gospel and so when the gospel message came to us and we understood the articulation of that gospel message uh, and there was a response in our hearts towards that god the father called us to himself but tonight what i want us to look at is the next phase of, of uh, this pathway of God's work in our life is the work of regeneration. The work of regeneration. The fact is, when we think about or uh, talk about regeneration, what we are saying, it is an act of God. Regeneration is an act of God in which he imparts new spiritual life in us. God imparts new spiritual life in us. It is not anything of ourselves. It is an act of God, which we sometimes call being born again. Now, when God does a work of regeneration in the human heart, as I mentioned, it is purely an act of God. We see this in the words of John, in John chapter 1, when John says that uh, you know that those who received Christ... Uh, Jesus gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or of husband's will, but born of God. And that means this work of regeneration, it is a work of God the Father in the human heart. It is, human beings can't mimic, mimic this, okay? This isn't something we could do like some psychological experiment or tricks or whatever. It is a deep spiritual work of God in the human heart and it's something that only God could do. God is sovereign in bringing about a regeneration of the human heart. You know, the prophet Ezekiel foresaw this uh, when he said, through the, the, when God spoke to the prophet Ezekiel, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Now number, notice the number of times in that text where God says, I will, I will give you a new heart. I will remove your heart of stone. Uh, you know, I will put my spirit in you. I will move you to keep my decrees. It is a work of God in the heart where even your desires and inclinations change, where even you begin to, where you want to serve God, where you want to please God, where before you had no desire uh, to, to do that. And so regeneration is a work of God the Father and it is a work of God the Holy Spirit, which has been applied through the work of the cross through Jesus on the cross. You know, uh, we, we read that we have been born of the Spirit and that it was God God, who is rich in mercy, who made us alive in Christ, even when we were dead in our transgressions. And so, as we will see later, this seems to suggest that even our faith in God is actually a response 
to an initial work of God in our hearts, a regenerative work in our hearts. And when the gospel comes to us, somehow faith was summoned in our hearts. Somehow faith was elicited in our heart. And that would seem to be a work of God in our heart. And it brought new spiritual life in us so that we were enabled to respond in faith and experience the life of God in us. We see an incredible example of this in the book of Acts uh, when uh, Peter uh, was led by the Lord to, to preach the gospel to the household of Cornelius and his household, which was very unusual because in those days, Peter being a Jew uh, did not uh, would not associate with unclean uh, Gentiles, Cornelius being a Roman centurion. And uh, Luke records that when he was preaching the gospel in Cornelius' household, even before he finished his message, he didn't even get to the end of the message. God was already at work in people's hearts. They were responding. The Holy Spirit came. There was repentance. People were responding in faith. God was working. It is regenerative work of God's Spirit as a work of God in the human heart. Now, given this, what I want us to do uh, tonight is let's look at three characteristics of regeneration in our hearts. The first thing that we could say about regeneration is that it is mysterious. It is mysterious because how God actually uh, gives new spiritual life to us, you know, where one minute we are literally spiritually dead and then the next minute we have been spiritually alive isn't something that can be explained in a science textbook. It's a mystery how God actually does this. You know, Jesus said that the wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. And so it is with everyone born of the Spirit. You know, I get amazed sometimes at the people that you was least expecting uh, to come to faith in Christ and you're not even aware of it and God's moving in their hearts, God's doing something in their life and they just respond in, in faith. It, it, you know, this work of regeneration is something that is a work of God. It, it goes beyond our own uh, abilities, humans even to anticipate or predict and it transforms us from within. For Paul says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. Uh, the new creation has come. The old has come and the new is here. Literally, when someone experiences the regenerative work of God in their life, they are a new creature. They are a new person. It isn't just that they were uh, spiritually dead in themselves. The fact is that they were spiritually dead to God. Uh, because of tr their trespasses, because of their sin, they were blocked off from that vital, life-giving relationship with God. And so when they become spiritually alive, when they are regenerated, they are alive to God and they literally become a new creature. They become a new cre creation who are destined for the ultimate new creation at the end of the age when God will, will, will recreate the heavens and the earth. So this is a work that is mysterious. Uh, we just can't explain it as a work of God in the human heart. But here's another characteristic of this work of regeneration. It happens prior to or instantaneously with saving faith. Prior to or instantaneously with saving faith. And the reason I say this is because sometimes it's not clear whether uh, you know, when we have saving faith in God, whether that happens the moment God's working in our heart or whether that happens just after God is working in our heart. But what it is clear is that the faith that we have to believe in God wouldn't even be there if God wasn't already working on the heart. You see, regeneration, as I mentioned, is God's work within us. It is an instantaneous work that happens within us within us where one moment well where one moment i should say we are spiritually dead but now we are alive now if you were grew up in a christian home and uh, like myself you may not recall when you actually 
that work of regeneration occurred in your heart. Uh, you only know that at some point something shifted, something changed. Uh, and maybe you're not able to put your finger in it, okay? But you know that you love the Lord and you know that you, you desire to serve God and you know that you believe the foundational truths of the Christian faith. And therefore, that is a work, that clearly a work of regeneration has occurred in your heart at some point, though you couldn't specifically put your finger on it. On the other hand, if you maybe grew up in a, a non-Christian home, uh, and you uh, didn't have a, a, a godly or Christian input uh, from the from 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 be from the beginning. You most likely do remember a point in your life where you experienced God in a very real way in your heart, where you experienced that work of regeneration. Uh, John Wesley famously wrote in one of his diaries, and I don't know exact date it was, but he said that he felt. A strange warming sensation in his heart as he responded to the gospel, as God was doing that work of regeneration. But as I mentioned before, it would seem that even your saving faith in Jesus uh, is a result of God's regenerative work in your heart, even before you, you responded in faith. Jesus says this, no one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him and so there's a work of the father in our hearts uh, even before we come to Jesus again Jesus says no one can come to me unless it is granted him by the father and uh, you remember that last week we saw that when Paul uh, was ministering in Philippi to a lady called Lydia uh, Luke records that the Lord opened her or Lydia's heart to give heed to what was said by Paul. Now think about this for a moment. If you do not believe that Jesus rose from the dead, if you do not believe that he is coming back again, if you do not believe that there'll be a general resurrection at the end of the age and we'll meet the Lord in the air, you're not born again, <laughs> okay? You are not born again. And the reason for that is this, who in the right mind, in the natural mind, would ever believe those things? And who would even have such a confidence of those things? Because actually, naturally speaking, you know, Jesus' resurrection from the dead his future coming, our resurrection in the future, is something that the human mind cannot comprehend or even accept. It is a belief that, in my view, is even a supernatural belief. In fact, it is a belief, actually, that I believe is a work of God, the Holy Spirit, in our hearts. It is a work of God's re regeneration that enables us even to believe that. As previously mentioned, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in our transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And so this hidden work of regeneration even elicits a faith out of our hearts to believe in Jesus, that Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus is coming back again. Someday we'll meet him in the air when he gives us new resurrection bodies. But this leads us to the third characteristic of this work of regeneration. It is regeneration brings life change. Though it is true that everyone who believes in God has been born of God, there are also the results of regeneration, and many of them which are specified in John's first letter. John says that no one who is born of God will continue to sin because God's seed remains in them. They cannot go on sinning because they have been born of God. Now, that doesn't mean to say that you live a life of sinless perfection. It doesn't mean to say that you don't have your moments where you feel like you just want to walk away from God or your backslidden moments. But what it does mean is this, that throughout the course of your Christian life, you are, you are gradually sinning less. 
God is working your heart. God is changing your heart. Your, your, your mind is being renewed and transformed. And actually you do not go on sinning. God, the, the life uh, generative power of God's seed that is in you through, uh, enables you to live a life that overcomes sin more consistently as you continue to walk with him. Uh, and so John further adds that you know that everyone who does what is right has been born of him and that everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God and that everyone who everyone born of God overcomes the world and finally John also adds that we know that anyone born of God does not continue to sin the one who has been born of God keeps them God keeps him safe and the evil one cannot harm them. And so John's mind, the necessary results of regeneration are that you will, uh, you will no longer live in a pattern of habitual sin that, that will be broken over time, that you live a life that gradually overcomes sin, that steps away from temptation, uh, a life that is more loving and considerate and kind to the people around you, a life that overcomes the evil one and a life that actually is protected from the evil one. And this is the result, this is the fruit of regeneration, of God's regeneration in the human heart. And it's important to say this because there are many people who claim to be followers of Christ, claim to uh, uh, know Jesus, and yet their lives, the fruit of their lives, does not bear witness to that Christian experience. Uh, you know, one of the most sobering things that Jesus said was that many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name, drive out demons. And in your name, before many miracles. And then I'll tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evil doers. Did you know that it's possible for someone to perform a miracle in Jesus' name, and yet they themselves have not been regenerated in their hearts? They have not born again. Rather, what Jesus is saying is this, it's the character of the person, it's the fruit of the life that really tells you whether someone has truly been reborn again uh, and uh, has been transformed. And so from tonight's study, we've seen that be born again is the regenerative work of God in the human heart in which he imparts new spiritual life it is totally a work of god in our hearts it is nothing to do of our, uh, ourselves in fact um, in fact even the faith i believe that we have to believe god is something of a work of grace in us and though it is mysterious uh, it is a work that nevertheless brings a change in us uh, when we uh, as we respond uh, to his goodness and, and, and the gospel of Christ. Now, that's our, our thought uh, to think about tonight, guys. I've got a, a question or questions uh, to ponder that you can discuss uh, within your life groups. And these are, are the questions. First question is this, have you been born again? Have you been born again? And, uh, you know, maybe if you haven't, uh, I want to invite you just to respond to Jesus uh, tonight and uh, uh, open your heart to him, receive him, ask for his forgiveness and uh, invite him into your life. The Bible says that those who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. And I want to give you that invite if you haven't yet been born again. Second question, what evidence would you say is there of new birth in your life? What evidence is there of new birth in your life? Thirdly, do you remember a specific time when your regeneration occurred? Or did you find it more of a process? And the final question, can you describe how you knew something 
had happened in your heart? Well, guys, those are the questions today. The question to ponder. The text is today. I'd like you to read John chapter five verses. Th- sorry, John chapter three, verses five to eight. And as you read those uh, verses, uh, what do Jesus' words teach? us about regeneration what did jesus words teach us about regeneration and if regeneration is solely a work of god then what good does it do to preach the gospel to all people at all well guys i hope you've enjoyed the study tonight and uh don't forget we have our uh, prayer meetings every wednesday at half three to half four except for once a month when we have it on a Sunday evening from 5 to 6. Come along to those you can or be part of a Sunday morning worship. Uh, guys, have a good rest of the week. and God bless you and uh, see you soon. Bless you.